getting a little teary-eyed up there. <laughs> um, good morning. The Lord be with you. I've been in Tenon Wells for 31 years this month. I look out and I see an old choir director that was here long ago. If you are a visitor or a newcomer or someone that has been here for many years, here are the reasons why I love Wells. Wells is a loving, caring, and sharing church. Wells is a grace church. Wells is a doing church. Wells is a compassionate church. Wells is a ministering church. Wells is a singing church. Wells is a colorful church. Wells is a spirit-filled church. Wells is a healing church. Wells is a forgiving church. Hopefully these are the reasons why you love Wells, as I do. If not, stick around for a while and you will discover what I've found for the past 31 years. Welcome to Wells. Now we'll have the call to worship. Will you please stand for the opening sentences? Here in this place, the Spirit of God resides. Shall we pray? Dear God, we gather in knowledge in broken places in our lives and in the world. Here and now, enter these places, we pray. We dedicate their power of worship to an honor and glory and sing and pray with confidence that you are our God and you are the people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please remain standing and turn in your hymnal to 724 on Jordan's Stormy Banks, I stand and all verses. <laughs>
ask you to remain standing for our affirmation of faith. If these words uh, mean something to you in your heart, or if these words are something that you aspire to, I invite you to share those passionately. We want to pause before we share the affirmation to remember someone we lost this week. Pearl Haygood was not a formal member of this church, but a lot of you knew her. She was an Assemblies of God person who came to Mississippi and just couldn't find an Assemblies of God church that she liked, and she found Wells. Her home going was on Saturday. We remember her daughter, Teresa, and we stand now in a moment of silence to honor her life and in her memory. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all the saints, and we give you thanks for Pearl. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pause now and welcome one another with words of peace in Christ and welcome to Wales. Finding your way back to your blessed pew, I do want to take a moment to introduce to you Jim and Sharon Bridges. Uh, Jim is here as our guest director today, Sharon his spouse, singing in the choir. And yes, they were here, Jim was here uh, 85 to 90, something like that. <coughs> And uh, he's here, work, he rehearsed with the choir on Wednesday night, and then here today to be with us. Give Shay a little bit of a break, and we're glad to have him here with us. Some of you remember him, and uh, let me go ahead and tell you now that that beautiful choral blessing that we have, the benediction at the end of the service, <laughs> that is to the tune of Edelweiss. What's, why are you laughing? I think we that's me. That's the man who's responsible for starting it. So, life of the church. We want to continue to lift up um, all of our announcements. Please read those emails when they come into you. Read your Wellspring and read all the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, there is a Wells Fest meeting immediately following this service. Brenda, is there anything else we need to say about that? Yes, we want everyone to fill out those Wells Fest t-shirts and start advertising. Uh, get the word out, it's the last Saturday in September, if you don't know. And um, we are not having Six Pack Sunday this year <coughs> because Grand Bobling is sponsoring us. <laughs> Uh, 
And if you're visiting with us for the first time, Six Pack Sunday is about <laughs> sodas, Cokes, Dr. Water. Peppers, water. <laughs> I want to continue to invite you to the coffees. We'll get some dates scheduled for those that are spread out geographically, but the uh, first one with me is this coming Tuesday here at the church, and uh, I will be here. I missed last Tuesday, and I apologize for that. Call the church and let us know if you're coming so we'll know how to, how to plan for that. About 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, uh, we'll gather. And I want you to start the countdown now for our Wednesday nights. They are about to kick back off. They'll kick off in a low-key way. Uh, we'll start with our children and our youth, uh, their activities, our, our delicious meals that are catered by Melanie. She'll be back. We don't know if we'll be in the fellowship hall or across, uh, across the way the, uh, in the uh, James Club building, but we will be meeting. The first uh, adult class begins the, the next Thursday night, Wednesday night. So what I want to ask is that the first Wednesday night, September 6th, everybody come, let's kick this off in a great way, be in great fellowship, sing together, and let me use that time, if you don't mind, to do a bit of a state of the church report. I've been here for a few weeks now. I need to check in with you on some things, and you may need to check in with me. So let's use that Wednesday as an opportunity to do that, and then the classes, the adult classes, will start the very next Wednesday. Are there other announcements, things I'm forgetting about? How about birthdays? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's birthday tomorrow. 79 years old. This oh, You gotta, you gotta tell, you gotta say he's 79 because he doesn't look 79. Elaine. Marcus. Elaine. Spencer will be 82 tomorrow. Wonderful. Steve. Is your name, is your name Steve? I distinctly said Steve. <laughs> Y'all, it's Beth's birthday month. Happy birthday. Happy birthday month, and my sister will be 60 tomorrow. Kevin's sister had a birthday on Friday. Happy birthday to all. Others? Granddaughter Madeline. Granddaughter Madeline. Okay, Beth. Had a birthday. Oh, yeah? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Craig. Nephew Thomas was the 23rd. Happy birthday, Thomas. We can't get them all in, so let's sing to these and the ones we haven't named. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I think I forgot anniversaries in the last service, so what about anniversaries we want to recognize today? Okay, we're going to start giving you coins, three coins, and when you use all three, <laughs> Beth? 13 years off of Living proof that it can be done and a powerful witness. Thank you. Others. That's first. Well, we want to move to our time of prayer. We certainly won't be able to lift up everything. One, because there's not time, and two, because we just don't know everything. And we've forgotten some, but God has remembered in our place. I want to remind you that we, uh, David Hampton takes good care to send prayer requests out two or three times a week at least. If you're not on that list, then grab one of these yellow cards right now and put your current email address on it, drop it in the offering plate. Also, if you have a confidential prayer request, maybe one you don't want to lift up 
uh, to the whole congregation. If you'll jot it down here and fold that over, the ushers will make sure it comes directly to me. I uh, want to lift up Jim Walters, who is in Baptist Hospital and really struggling. He's had a, a blockage and has faced more surgery. I want to remember him. Greg Thornton is doing very well at Baptist. Continue to lift him up. Uh, John's uh, brother, Jim? Joe. Joe. Uh, 60 years old, fell at uh, his group home this week. And do you want to say anything else about that, John? Uh, he's, he's in a lot of pain. He's not able to. He's, Joey's about two and a half, three years old. And uh, it's just tough for him to share pain. Uh, and my mom and my dad, are, are, it's really affected them a lot. Well, we will lift up your parents and Joe and all the caregivers there at the group, at the group home. We've got a hurricane that's been blowing in. We know what that's like in Mississippi. Please remember all the folks in South Texas and throughout. Uh, you may know some by name who've already, already been flooded. Uh, so we want to lift them up, and we will be making opportunities for flood buckets. So just uh, watch, the, uh, watch the emails and the newsletter for that, uh, for <coughs> opportunities to serve. Anything else to stay? Uh, Mark. Uh, my friend Joe Jordan's mother is here today. Norma Jordan. We lift up Joe Jordan's mother, Norma, who's uh, trying to make it across the River Jordan right now. Jim. Uh, prayers, please, for our daughter Sarah, who uh, heads to school in New York tomorrow. Sarah headed, <coughs> headed to New York. Doc. About, we lift up Dr. Bob Thompson and uh, the whole community that knew him and loves him. Camille? Lifting prayers to Vicki. She's got two weeks of leave behind her and three to go. And doing very well. She needs a doctor. We're going to pray for her. We're going to pray for her. We'll keep him going. Beth? My friend Allison, whose mother is dying today. We lift up Allison. Craig? Yes, Paul Ferguson. Lift up Paul Ferguson. Ron? Keep Melanie and all of our friends who are living with cancer uh, and all those who are called to care for them. And Anne Herlihy as well, all of them. Brenda? Oh, my parents that are transitioning to assisted living as well. For transitions. Chris Grillis. Chris Grillis. Yes, John? We lift up Bob and all others. Marguerite. Lifting up the Alts. Excuse me, an update on Mrs. Armstrong. Mrs. Harry Armstrong. Some time maybe today she was going to find out. She called us all for the Alts. She said, well, so we know what's going on, and I don't know if I should leave her or not. I don't have an update today. Do you have an update on Terry Armstrong? Last time I talked. She's still at Briar Briar Hill. She's still at Briar Hill in Richland and continuing to improve. God's remembered what we have forgotten, hard at work on those things we know nothing of. We pause for a moment of simple silence that you might lift up privately your own personal prayers of petition and thanksgiving. So in these moments, let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, we beseech you to hear these prayers of your people. We lift them up to you in humble adoration. We lift up these things that we have remembered, and we count on the power of your Holy Spirit to remember those things we have forgotten. We give you all honor and glory, all the praise and thanksgiving, 
for the good things that come our way. And we ask your forgiveness when we, in the midst of counting all the concerns, forget to talk about the blessings and the glories. But we lift those up to you as well, O oh God. We know that you are a God who works with us in so many mysterious ways. You have dealt with us, your people, for thousands of years. You have loved us at our best and loved us at our worst. This morning, in addition to all of these that we have named on our lips, we lift up those named in our hearts. And we lift up to you our nation and its leaders, not only the leaders that are in office, elected, but leaders in churches and synagogues and temples everywhere, that we might all seek your wisdom and that we might all speak the truth that love prevails. God, be with us now as we lift these things before you, confident that we are not alone, reminded that we are not in control, and humbled by your presence with us on this holy Sabbath. All of this we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord, who came teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We can't sit down if we are standing on the promises, so let's stand together. Number 374, we'll only sing the first stanza. Stanza one of Standing on the Promises. Please remain standing and turn to your hymn note to page 846 for the shared scripture, Psalms 124, verses 1 through 8. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, Then the, flood, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have given us over us, gone over us. Then the raging waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to the teeth, to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowls. The snare is broken, and we have escaped.
you bow and join me with our offertory prayer? God, we thank you for a chance to gather here this morning. We hope we have given some of ourselves as we've gotten up, gotten in our vehicles, and made our way to this place. We come offering ourselves as a blessing to those around us and to those that we may see in the coming days, a blessing of Christ that we have experienced this day. Help us to give as Christ gave to us, lovingly and unconditionally. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, uh, Jim. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thanks for surviving our choir on Wednesday night. <laughs> and we appreciate it very much. My first Sunday here, I went off script and kind of told you a lot of very personal things about, about my life. The next Sunday, I ask you to begin a journey with me uh, to talk about pilgrimage and being a pilgrim and what that means. And we've used the lectionary gospels from Matthew for these few weeks. We got away from it a little bit one week, uh, but now we come together to ask the question, you know, where do we go from here, and what is next? You'll find the gospel lesson this morning printed on the back of your bulletin. It's from the Common English Bible, and if you choose, I invite you to stand in honor of the reading of the gospel this morning. <clears throat> From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from these territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But Jesus didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away. She keeps shouting out after us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then, her daughter was healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And now, Almighty God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and each heart gathered here be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a couple of things we said about pilgrimage. I'm not going to go back too far, but we did say that a pilgrimage is different than a vacation. A pilgrimage is not going on a tour. You don't necessarily have a tour guide for a pilgrimage, though we count Jesus as our guide. It's not a vacation, a vacation you, you plan for and you sightsee and you hope you don't spend up all your money and it has an ending date. And while there are some pilgrimage that, pilgrimages that are maybe just, you know, temporary, a, a trip like I took to Ireland in May. The invitation that I have offered to us is that we instead think about what we're doing here and now as living a pilgrim life. If to be on pilgrimage means that we go out not hoping to have an experience of the holy, but confident, expecting that we will have an experience of the holy, of God, then maybe we might consider that as a daily discipline. We began a simple journey. We used the Gospel of Matthew and all of those stories, stories of healing, of, of calming a storm, of saving and healing so many people feeding 5,000, I invited us to consider what it would look like to begin a walk of faith, a journey of faith that is instead this 
this pilgrimage. Not so much a pilgrimage in the ancient traditions like a pilgrimage to Jerusalem or Canterbury. And not necessarily a pilgrim, pilgrimage in the more modern sense that, that are planned for us and we can sign up and go. And I took one in May and I'll take another one next year in, in October. But I did ask us to think about this as a daily discipline. Something that we rise and claim each morning of our lives. We've got to get up and we can't wait. We've got to claim it right then. That today is a day I will be a pilgrim and I will experience the sacred. And I will ask the Holy Spirit to open me up in such a way that I won't be a tourist in life. I won't just be observing, I will be engaging and feeling the movement that that creates from the inside out. I sang for you just a little bit. The servant song, if you've done a walk to Emmaus or Curcio, you may know that. A couple of Sundays ago, the choir even sang it as a call to worship. The first word is, is, is brother, but I've changed it to pilgrim. Pilgrim, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. And pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey, brothers, sisters on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. On July 9th, we considered what it might look like to be a reluctant pilgrim. In other words, we talked about us. Because truth be told, most of us are probably reluctant pilgrims. I know I am. Because even though the notion and idea of pilgrimage is somehow appealing and even a little romantic, we can all be hesitant and reluctant to say yes because it calls for us to make such a deep commitment and we become afraid that we might fail, that we might break that commitment. And we do not want to break a commitment that we've made to our creator. And so instead of walking out on faith and, and, and taking a bit of a risk to step out into that unknown pilgrimage, we just don't try at all. On July 9th, we read of Jesus proclaiming, to what shall I compare this generation? He's frustrated. What shall I compare this generation? John came. He did not eat. He did not drink. And you accused him of having a demon. Here I've come. I, I party with you. I eat with you. I drink with you. And you called me a drunkard and a glutton. You just don't get it it seems that Jesus was saying. You might say that Jesus encountered a great lot of reluctant pilgrims. But that's not the case in today's story. That's not the case at all. If we could say that this unnamed Canaanite woman was a pilgrim, she was anything but reluctant. She didn't give up. In fact, she was annoying. She ran after the disciples. She made a disruption. She shouted. This Canaanite woman who simply would not give up, she persisted. She was a persistent pilgrim. And so today we round out this series 
asking the question, if we truly are pilgrims on a journey, then what's next, Wells? And now, if you're visiting with us for the first time, or you don't quite consider yourself a part of Wells yet, and I'm sorry to hear that, but this, this question works for you too. It's that ever-present, always there question of what's next. Sometimes seeing the 100 steps ahead is a lot easier than seeing that one step in front of you that you just have to take. And so now, in this journey, pilgrims, what is next for Wells? Where do we go from here? And wherever we go from here, will we be persistent? Will we be persistent to the point of being willing to fail? Will we have the persistence to say to Jesus, to demand even, yeah, but Jesus, even the dogs got the crumbs from the master's table. Let's talk about the story of this unnamed Canaanite woman for just a moment. This woman who took such great risk, risk that most of us have never taken in our lives nor ever will take in our lives. First of all, she's a woman. That was very risky in that day and time. Secondly, she's a woman who's approaching men, a group of Jewish men. And if it had been any other group of men other than the ones following Jesus, this story could have had a very different, violent ending. And she's not quiet. She's not quiet and meek and demure. She's shouting. She's making a ruckus. She was in danger at that point. And, and then for me, the hardest part of this passage of all, for me, is that my Jesus, my Lord, turned her away, shooed her off, ignored her, perhaps. Go away, Canaanite, I came for the lost sheep of Israel. That's hard to swallow. But this persistent pilgrim, instead of saying, okay, I, at least I tried, she pressed on. She did not care about what risk she was taking for herself. Her daughter was at home dying. Master, even dogs, they get the crumbs, these little crumbs that fall from your table. Even the dogs get those. I'm not asking for a full meal, Master. I don't need the feast, just a crumb. Just a tiny crumb that even perhaps in that ordinary crumb, she might find the sacred, the holy, the healing. She was persistent. And the heart and mind of Jesus was changed. Because that was one persistent pilgrim. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. It pays to be persistent, folks. It pays to be persistent. In everyday matters and in matters of faith, and in matters of the future of the church, big C, it pays to be persistent in matters of the church. 
that is Wells. Because we do have a question before us. Pilgrims, where do we go from here? It pays to be persistent and determined that together we will encounter the holy, the sacred. That together we will search out and seek even the tiniest crumb. Now you know that's a metaphor. But let us not overlook even the tiniest of places small and seemingly insignificant things. Let us not overlook those wells, because if we do, we might miss the blessing. There is nothing insignificant and too small for our God. And that includes everything within this building and within the spirit of this building. I'm inviting us on a pilgrimage and to be intentional about that, to make that decision every morning when we, when we get up and claim it. I'm inviting us on a pilgrimage. Don't be reluctant. There is plenty of room in the boat. Come on in. We've got room for one more. But it is time to ask the question, once we're in the boat, where do we go from here? Are we content to float or simply drift, enjoying the sun and the breeze, enjoying one another's company? That's a good thing. It is but it won't last forever. Or are we willing to allow Jesus to steer us into the unknown? Because that's really what we're talking about. We've never been here before. You've never had a new pastor before. Are we willing to let Jesus steer us into the unknown? Are we willing to allow Jesus to steer us into uncharted waters? Does it scare you? It should. It scares me. You know why? Because the storms are going to come crashing in and the waves are going to pound against our vessel. But you know what? We've got the one who even calms the sea with us. I don't want to just drift. That's too much like just going through the motions. And that's not what God has asked us to do. Wells has always had hardworking folks, people who can plan for the future, who have vision. But let's be honest, we've also had something else all these years. We have had a faithful, persistent pilgrim servant to fall back upon, to lean into, to rest our head on his shoulders. Keith Tonkel was always there in those times to say, hey, baby, that's okay. We'll try it again. There's an echo in this church. I don't know if you hear it, but I hear it. Being the newest one, my ears are tuned in a little bit differently, probably, and I hear this echo in this church. And it's not a bad echo, it's a good echo. It goes something like this. Let's ask Keith. Let's see what Keith thinks. 
Run it by Keith. And my favorite, because I say it all the time, WWKD. What would Keith do? And I'll tell you something, as long as I have the honor of serving this church, I'll always be asking that question. There's an echo in this church full of questions and good questions. Only now we can't ask them in the same way because we won't get an answer in the same way. We've always been on an intentional journey of faith, Wells. But today, today the invitation is to walk out on faith into a new pilgrim journey, into a great unknown, to allow Jesus to steer us into the mystery. Steer us into what waits for wells in our next phase. To steer us into the great unknown, a newness of life where we can expect the unexpected, but still have the confidence to know that in the midst of the surprise and unexpected, we will encounter the sacred the holy, the living pilgrim, that is our brother, Jesus. Almost two months ago now, I told the story of all my ill-fated attempts at running away from home and how I never seemed to get beyond the uh, property line. And I shared that I always became frightened, that I did not trust my own ability to navigate and find my way on my own. <clears throat> Making a decision to be a pilgrim on this journey, to live a pilgrim's life, is scary. Kind of like a little girl running away and making it just to the edge of the property, but no further. A pilgrim life is scary. It can be frightening. It means encountering new things, <clears throat> encountering and facing the unknown. And what if we fail? What if we can't even find our way to the crumbs under the master's table? What if we cannot navigate the journey and find our way on our own? Well, here, here are the good news and the challenge. We will never encounter the holy, never embrace the living Christ because of our own ability to navigate and find our way. On our own, pilgrims, we will never understand what it means to be on a pilgrim journey because the first step of a pilgrim journey is a willingness to let go of control, to just let go, to lean back and take a deep breath and shake the tightness out of our shoulders and the busyness out of our heads and relinquish our need to control the next step. We can see the ones a hundred steps down the road, but we can't make that first one until we let go of control. To relinquish control and confess that we have no ability to navigate on our own, and we will never find our way on our own. You know why? because a pilgrim never finds her way. A pilgrim finds God's way. And that is the good news. 
because as scary as the first step might be, where we are going really is God's way. So don't be reluctant, pilgrim. Persist. Persist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At Wells, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist every Sunday. On Sundays that aren't the first, at 11 o'clock, you're invited to make a pass through the alcove. Greg Campbell will be there with the elements. If you'd like to receive communion on your way out, it will be there waiting for you. Our hymn of invitation is... Number 545, the church is one foundation. And if you have anything that uh, you're still trying to hold control over that you want to leave at this altar, feel free to come forward as we sing and leave it right there. Let us stand and sing together. <laughs> 